Hi, everyone. So I just wanted to echo what Dr. Sweetser said. In the beginning of class, I wanted to thank not only our guests, but also our peers for not only being with us throughout the whole semester, but being here and watching and supporting our presentation. My name is Gerilyn Davis, and I'm joined by my colleagues. Anna Valesco, Ochen Sanyu, Amanda Enriquez, Paige McFarland. And this semester, we had the opportunity to work with the Citizens Against Sewage Solutionist Group to create a social media campaign. So a little about, about the issue, and as we all know, it's a transboundary sewage issue, and that was our semester topic. Moving on to our next slide, we conducted a media analysis to gauge the current media landscape surrounding the sewage issue, and what we found was that there were spurts and series of times where the media would put forth these articles. And based on McCombs and Shaw's agenda setting theory, we saw that the impacts that the articles made actually transferred over to social media. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the theory, it's a theory that says that the media does not tell us what to think exactly, but more so what to think about. And we really saw this affect our campaign. And moving on to our research portion, we conducted a digital, a digital audit to gauge the current media landscape that the Citizens Against Sewage Group has. So we looked at a total of 231 individual posts from Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And what we found was that Facebook had the most interactions and engagement, followed by Twitter and lastly by Instagram. Facebook was a private group where citizens and the general public could join and be approved by Darren and Ginger and or Lance. And Twitter was a public page and Instagram was a public page as well. The Instagram was the newest page that was created on January 22nd of 2015. So through our research, we kind of came up with three main objectives. The first one was to increase public discourse on the issue. The second was to increase the social media following. And the third was to increase the engagement on the social media posts. And all of these had a deadline of April 16th. Um, we also identified key stakeholders. Obviously, the San Diego public is kind of an overall. And then more specifically, you have people who are directly exposed to the issue. So citizens of Imperial Beach, Coronado, Tijuana, um, you also have local surfers, beachgoers, people that are going into the water, uh, border patrol agents, military members, and then obviously the public generally. And then the target demographic is 18 to 24 years old on social media. Um, so the messaging strategies for our campaign were to educate key stakeholders about the sewage crisis, to provide the public uh, with simple and easily digestible um, information, and as well as to give the most up-to-date information about the sewage crisis. Um, we tr attempted to do this through pictures, memes, infographics, and videos throughout the, the campaign. Um, and when we were planning the social media, there was kind of a lot of branding that went into it. The two main colors were blue and green, and just overall, it was kind of meant to cultivate the image of a clean environment, because I think we all know that overall, that is the goal. Um, so, that can be it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so examples of our implementation tactics were posts such as these where we incorporated branding. Um, this is an example of a weekly post we did um, called Citizen of the Week where we took a Facebook group member and we highlighted kind of what they did for the cause and just a little bit of facts about them. We also did a um, Catch of the Week where we took an unusual item we found either on our border tour or in pictures from the Facebook group and just kind of showed people through like a um, very visually appealing way, even though it's not always an appealing object, just what really is going on. Um, we also made sure to do the text in Spanish as well, because this is a like a issue on both sides. So we just wanted to make sure that we were getting our messages across in ways that um, were easily digestible for both of our audiences. And then to build on our messaging strategy to educate the general public, we wanted to keep all of our graphics really information-based. So we created posts that were either quotes from um, news articles or pictures and information that we learned on our morning tour with Chris Harris, um, or data that the Citizens Against Sewage team sent to us. We also created a two-minute um, informational video about Treaty 44, which is the water treaty between the U.S. and Mexico. It was our most liked Instagram post, our most retweeted Twitter post, and our most shared Facebook post. 
We also implemented means. This is something that Citizens Against Suicide was already doing. So we just wanted to create images that targeted our younger demographic, hence Britney Spears and Toy Story. <laughs> So the whole implement, implementation lasted for uh, four weeks, and after four weeks, we did an evaluation to compare data before and after for implement, uh, implementation. And we can see here on Facebook, the total engagement increased from 1,100 to 1,800 by, six, by 740. And even though only 17% uh, of the posts are from our team, but the posts receive about 20% of the engagement overall. And on Facebook, the followers increased by 27% too. Now let's before we move on to Twitter. On Twitter, the total engagement increased from two to 165 by 163. Uh, the overall reach increased by 8,645. 8, 8, and the average engagement number per post increased from 0 to 0.5 to 4.34. Instagram is the account that we totally took to control. And during the implementation, the whole total number of engagement increased, uh, increased from 55 to 439 by almost 700%. Uh, on Instagram, the followers increased from 33 to 115 by almost 250%. And the engagement rate from our followers increased by 129%. So moving on to our evaluation of public discourse, and we conducted a both pre-campaign and a post-campaign. So our pre-campaign consisted of dates ranging from February 25th to March 18th. And as a team, we defined public discourse in regards to social media as either a post from an elected official or a general user. But we didn't want to gauge the overall media landscape, so we also looked at news outlets and organizations. And as you can see, in the pre-campaign overall analysis of identities, there were a total of 103 posts. Of those 103 posts, only 32 of those were from elected officials and general users. The top three messages for the pre-campaign were that one, it's a transboundary issue so that affects Mexico and the United States. Two, that it's an environmental issue. And three, that it is an issue that Mexico needs to either take action or responsibility for. The bottom three messages were that the U.S. should take responsibility, that it's a public safety issue, and posts about solutions. So moving on to our post-campaign data, we did the same time frame. So March 18th to April 16th was actually the length of our campaign. And we found that there was an overall increase in posts in general. So we moved from 103 to 183 total posts from four of our key identity areas. And we found that there was an increase of 45 so moving from 32 posts from general users and elected officials up to 77. And the top three messages mirrored the P campaign, where one, it was a transborder issue, and two, that it was an issue that affected the environment. But what was interesting was that the third top message was that it was an issue that affected the public safety. And moving on to the overall analysis, pre-campaign versus post-campaign, we found that there was an increase in positive posts a decrease in negative posts, and also an increase in neutral posts. So moving on to neutral posts, the neutral posts were more so citizens and general users and elected officials just sharing the information. So while they wouldn't put their two cents into linking to an article, they would just have a general FYI or really just getting this information out to their other friends and family that they were in contact with in social media. And what we found was that the pre-campaign posts were centered around the wall and when Trump was visiting. So there was a lot of posts that were saying that he should put pressure on Mexico to really take charge of this issue and post campaign. We saw that there was an increase in the media articles that were talking about how Mexico was actually putting funding towards these issues. So we think that that's why there was a positive correlation where we have Mexico actually taking responsibility for that. And now we see that the negative has decreased because it takes the focus off of Trump and the United States and puts it more so on a positive aspect that there is actually a solution to this issue. So in conclusion, we reached most of our objectives by increasing the public discourse by 140%, increase the social media following um, both Instagram and Facebook uh, platform. Unfortunately, we lost 1% of the followers on Twitter. Uh, but overall engagement increased on all <coughs> social media platforms. 
guys, we are done for the presentation. Any questions?